We are turning now to another American icon that we all know well, the American flag. And the particular flag that we want to focus on here was raised over Fort McHenry in Baltimore on the morning of September 14, 1814. That move signaled the American victory over the British in the battle for the city during the War of 1812. Well, the sight of the flag inspired lawyer and poet Francis Scott Key to write the Star Spangled Banner, now the American National Anthem. The original Star Spangled Banner is one of the most treasured artifacts at the Smithsonian's National Museum of American History in Washington, D.C. Well, I went to the museum to see and talk about the flag with curator Jennifer Jones. Take a look. Jennifer, tell us about this exhibit that we're in, and specifically this woman we see behind us. Sure. The um, exhibit that we're standing in is the Star Spangled Banner. It's the home of the flag that inspired Francis Scott Key to write uh, the words to our national anthem. Um, behind me is Mary Pickersgill, and she is the woman uh, responsible for making this uh, historic flag. It is 30 feet by 42 feet large um, at the time of its making. And Mary was um, hired by the commander of Fort McHenry to make this extremely large flag. And the, uh, George Armistead, who was the commander, told her he wanted a flag so large that the British would be sure to see it at the mm. fortification. And so um, it is an extra large garrison size flag. Now, many people in our audience are foreign. They're not here in the mm -hmm. United States. And so for our international viewers who did not grow up in American history classes, tell us a little bit about the history of this flag and of the Star Spangled Banner. Sure. Um, the flag uh, was flown during the War of 1812. Um, America went back to war with Britain in 1812 and in order to um, what we call resecure our American democracy. And so it was the um, second battle of, of uh, freedom for America. And um, it, the war lasted for a little over two years. Um, the Treaty of Ghent was what actually was signed in late 1814, but uh, there were still battles uh, in the United States with the British um, up until early 1815. Well, we've been talking about it so much. Why don't we go ahead and take a look at it? Okay. Let's walk over right. and, and check out the flag. What you're seeing behind me is the Star Spangled Banner in the chamber that we designed for it so that um, it is in low light, it is in constant temperature and humidity control, and it's actually in low oxygen. Um, normal oxygenation levels in what we breathe every day are about 21% it's in less than 14% oxygen. And that's to help uh, the long-term preservation um, of the artifact. Um, and so what you're seeing is um, the flag laying um, on a, a specially built table that um, helps to uh, show the visitor what it actually looks like. So it's about at a 10 degree angle. Um, so when you're up here and you get to see the flag, you're actually um, at the same height as the flag um, is. You'll notice one of the stars is missing. Um, mm. It was cut away um, and we don't know by whom. Um, the uh, daughter of uh, Armistead, um, Georgiana Armistead, who was sort of the caretaker of the flag, said it was cut away for a very important uh, individual, but she never would reveal um, to whom it was given. And let's talk about Francis Scott Key and how he came up with the lyrics sure. to the Star Spangled Banner. Okay, Francis Scott Key was a um, Washington attorney, and he had been um, hired and asked to come and secure a release of a doctor who had been taken, um, had been captured by the British as they came through Washington. And so they were holding um, this doctor on a British ship in the harbor outside of Baltimore. So Francis Scott Key went to Baltimore, got on a small ship, and um, went out to meet the British fleet um, before the Battle of Baltimore itself. The British, as they were getting ready to prepare for the Battle of Baltimore, realized that he may have heard too much about their plans, so they held him um, on his ship next to the British fleet. They detained him. On the morning of September 14th, he didn't know whose flag would be flying after the battle had ceased. And so as the 
as the smoke cleared and as the storm, all the clouds cleared because it was a stormy evening um, at the last part of the battle, um, he was on his own ship and he wanted to see whose flag was being raised over Fort McHenry because if it was the British flag, we had lost. Right. And so as he stood there looking to see, possibly using a spyglass that we have here on exhibit, um, he saw this large flag, the Star Spangled Banner flag, being raised over Fort McHenry, and he was relieved. And so at that time, he was so moved to start writing down the lyrics um, to what became our national anthem in 1931. And so that document that he wrote those lyrics on is for the first time ever here at the Museum of American History until the 6th of July has been united with the flag that inspired those, those words. And it really was such a great opportunity for us to get to see these two items together, both the flag and the lyrics. So, of course, we have to thank Jennifer Jones and everyone at the American History Museum who made our visit possible. It was amazing.